Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster. And as you can see, this is the beginning part of what if Deku was a blue lantern. Okay, now then. For those of you that, uh, well before I start, but for those of you who are thinking a new what if, you do realize that if you're confused about how I'm running my YouTube channel of what ifs, you really should pay attention to the uh, update videos so that I don't have to continuously explain this in the comments. With that uh, being said, there will be some DC characters in this, but mostly just Lantern Corps individuals. Alright, so yeah. With that, I hope you will enjoy and hit it. Okay then, now, before we get to Izuku, we gotta back up a bit in time, where All Might was becoming a great hero and such, and working over in America for a small time, where he met Hal Jordan, another hero who works in the States, who used a power ring. This being the green ring of the Green Lantern Corps powered by Will. As they did get along, there was something odd. Though, to them, they didn't realize it until a bit later. As we switch over to a far off planet where we see the only Orange Lantern as all the others were killed off by one another due to the Orange Lantern Corps being one powered by Avarice, aka Greed. As an orange ring floats in the air and tries to get away, the last Orange Lantern grabs it, saying, No, you are mine! Where are you going? Who is trying to take you? As another ring begins to float and shoots off right past them, he yells, No! And chases it to its source, carrying the Orange Lantern power battery. As it's going straight for Earth. If you're wondering who it's going to, it would have to be all for one. He constantly looks for more power to take from others, as well as people who want power to give to them and if they can't handle it they'll just turn them into a monster that will serve him as a mindless puppet sounds somewhat familiar considering you know the ring that's going towards him as the ring goes towards him he sees it glow in front of him as it slips on his finger and empowers him, giving more or less a black and orange suit, well, a black and orange colored version of his normal suit, more his style, as the orange lantern showed up yelling, give it back, it's mine, as they fought, but the orange lantern died, as Oliver one took the battery from him, he shot off in the space for a time. Hal was informed that an orange lantern went to Earth in Japan as he flew over there. But as he was starting to fly, all might ask what was going on as Hal Jordan filled him in that he got a report from some people he knows that something really bad just went to Japan 
worried about his home, he asked how to help him. He, well, he asked how to help him get to Japan, being worried about his home. Al understands worrying about uh, their own home and knew All Might's strength could help. So he created a bubble around him using his power ring and flew off to Japan. Once they got there, they found the corpse of the orange lantern. Wondering, what the hell? How is he dead? All Might asked, you know him? He just covers his face, stating, yeah. Whoever did this is powerful enough, maybe even more powerful than you, or at least around that strength. And if he took what he had, oh dear God, we are in so much trouble. As only one person, as Hal remarks that he has a similar power to him, but it allows him to create constructs of people he's d defeated or killed before, making more like an army of mi like construct minions. As All oh, Might can only think of one person who can do something like that. Thinking this is a quirk, he knows who could have done this and what he most likely took before just leaving. Though he thought for a moment, thinking, wait, how would he know? How stated that he took something. If it was a quirk, how did he know about All for One? As All Might looked at him, asking, Have you ever heard the name All for One? As Hal looked at him, asking, What are you talking about? Do you know who did this? As All Might is confused and states, I think we both need to talk to each other. Because I have a feeling something's off. As Al's not sure what's going on, but whoever this all for one person is must have done this. And he's worried as All Might and him talk. Al explains the power of the ring that he is actually quirkless, but he was chosen by the ring for being someone who could overcome fear. Explaining that there are actually multiple lantern cores. Not just the green lantern, but also the red lantern, yellow lantern, the blue lantern, violet, indigo, and lastly, the one that the body of this individual was a part of, the, the orange lantern core, as he was the last orange lantern explaining their history and the source of their power, as well as the source of power from everyone else. All Might then explained what he knew about All for One, as well as trusting him with the secret of One for All. With Hal Jordan saying, Damn, so you're, you were born quirkless. And, boy, that's a, that's a lot to take in, man. As Al stated, yeah, and it's a lot to take. As, you know, All Might state, yeah, and it's a lot to take in that there are actual aliens out there, plus these lantern core things and they, that just have rings going out across the universe, letting people travel between planets with, with just a ring on a finger. But how laughing stating, yeah, I know how crazy it can sound at first. Oh, trust me, when I first got this thing, I, uh, I, I almost had a panic attack. Especially since it brought me to the dying, dying alien that, uh, that it used to belong to. With all my stating, okay, what? <sighs> As, he asks, so what now? Alan states that he could probably scan for it, but 
he didn't really have any alert for the orange lantern coming here and I would have figured this all for one person might have uh, stayed here but if that happened I the ring would have picked up the orange lantern power so it probably means he's as how looked up like straight up to the sky following all might as he states oh that's not good now stating no no it is not as for all for one he decided to ransack some high level tech from some aliens as well as grab one of their top machinists forcing him to create something that would disperse the energy signature of his ring and battery across an entire planet and make sure no one could find him. Something like that probably isn't too out there considering the kind of things that the kind of technology that is in DC something like a energy signal scrambler throughout an entire planet of one ring and one battery not that crazy actually in comparison as this was made over one had what he need figuring that it might be best to lay low for now just in case to figure out what this can do as for his mental state I would imagine he had a number of quirks, like a lot, including ones that would keep him from being affected by any mental effects. So, he's somewhat immune to the mental warping effects of the Orange Lantern ring due to quirks he gathered to avoid having his head messed with by any enemies that came along. I mean, he was already powerful enough physically, but he covered his bases making sure no one could mess with his head. As he heads back to Earth, how Ring picked up the signature of the orange lantern ring, but it was weird. When he went to scan it, he had to go all the way in the atmosphere to try it, but found that it was scattered across the whole planet, and it only registered the orange lantern's pow power source as well as the orange lantern ring as he thinks huh so that's what he was out in space doing find all might as he suits down back to earth finding all might and telling him that he's back and now and he has something that keeps him from locating his exact position with this worrying all might he asked what they should do as he has to go talk to the guardian all might asked who are they as hal remembered he didn't tell him that part he explains that they were basically the first sentient or at least one of the first sentient life forms in the universe and the creators of not only the green lantern core but one even created the Blue Lantern Corps. As All Might asked, okay, so bring me with you. They said, know how important this is. And I seen what he can do firsthand. Hal agreed to this, putting him in the bubble and bringing him to Oa. As All Might was somewhat sweating bullets as he was going faster than the speed of light, going to an alien planet full of flying aliens in similar outfits to Hal. And some of them looked very weird. He even saw a, fl a stricken squirrel. And he was thinking, What did I just get brought into? As they met with the Guardians, and Hal and All Might told them everything about All for One and the Orange Lantern power 
ring and its battery. As this was actually pretty serious. This guy would be dangerous even without the ring. But with it, he's even more so. So they had to send out some requests for assistance. Time passed, and when it came to it, they fought all for one with All Might. Not a large group, but the Lanterns were able to hold off the constructs while All Might used his power to wail on All for One the best he could. But how backing them up? They were able to cause severe damage, the same as in canon. All Might was still severely injured. As the Indigo Lantern did what he could to heal him. Though a number of, of vital of organs parts were ripped out. Though at most he could just do a patch job. At least in these. But he survived. They figured that all for one was dead. They couldn't find the power ring, but the body disappeared too, which was worrying. But the wounds he suffered would most likely be life threatening. And with the disperser, they couldn't find the battery on Earth. Whatever he had made dispersed the energy and sealed more or less cloaked it at the same time, making it literally impossible to find. And think about how hard it would be for how to literally scan the entirety of Earth for a something that's about the size or a little bit bigger to the size of a bread box. So an entire planet search on that probably a little bit unrealistic but for now they were good I moved on all might healed the best that he could but was drastically weakened only able to do hero work at full power for limited time a day creating small might with that we get to Izuku growing up and such, as he was told he would, that he couldn't be a hero, that he just didn't have a quirk, as this did hurt him as a little kid, and his mother tried to console him about it, saying that she's sorry. He looked through seeing All Might and still inspired to be like him, even going through some knowledge of heroes out there. He noticed something. A racer head. He uh, he had a quirk that erased other quirks, making them non-functional. Of course, that'd be good, but wasn't sure how that would work in battle since some quirks or more mutation upon their bodies, making it not something that can simply be cancelled out in a type of way. As he clicked on a link that showed one of his fights, it showed him fighting with a scarf, carrying up villains left and right. It was a modest group, mind you, but still impressive. As he smirked, stating, Okay, I can do this. As he smiles, and begins training. He's gonna not be naive about it and actually train and hope the hope to be a hero the best he can. As he grew up, he kept training, getting some muscle on him, yeah. As similar things happen in canon, Zuku always did what he could to keep his head up. Getting used to the bullying, though not really liking the fact that he got used to it. As around this time, we see on the home planet of the Blue Lantern, they were looking for new members 
like usual, due, the, due to some criteria, the Blue Lantern Corps uh, can have trouble finding new members. As a ring emerged from the power source of the Blue Lanterns, the main battery, and a ring emerged, shooting off into space. As they were checking to where it was going, it was steadily heading to Earth. As for the day that the Izuku, like in canon where we start as, that day went similar to in canon. But he kept his head up a bit more than usual. Still being kind of worried, but not, not really uh, drooping his head. But he still felt pretty bad about being treated that way. And he still wanted to be a hero. Which is when the sludge villain happened and tried to take over his body. As he was wishing that he didn't want to die, All Might showed up and saved him. As similar as in canon, Izuku fanboyed out and he finds out that he has his autograph and thanks him and such as All Might tries to jump away with Izuku latching onto his leg as in canon. All Might deflates as Izuku asks his question about being a hero. All Might in here knows about the Lantern Corps and about how being quirkless and how he was quirkless himself. He looks up thinking maybe as he states nothing is certain in life but being quirkless and going to try to be a hero it won't be easy for you you understand that right as Izuku clenches his fist he states I know and I already know a bunch about a bunch of heroes that aren't, aren't really good for combat but they trained so hard so that they could fight incredibly, even without a combat quirk, right? All Might smirked as he states, that is true, but still, it won't be easy to understand that. I won't discourage you from trying, you can give it a shot if you want, but... It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have a fail safe, just in case. Right, kid? As he smirks and walks off, Izuku looks out, wondering, Okay, that wasn't really encouraging me to be a hero, but that wasn't discouraging me from doing it either. So, I guess it's okay? As he just sighs, scratching the back of his head, wondering what he should do now. As he walks back down and such, and boom, the explosion happens. As the sludge villain did escape from All Might's grasp, and now has Bakugo as he is going crazy, blowing up things. At this point, Saint Walker already informed how, through communication through their rings, that uh, a Blue Lantern ring was heading to Earth, as he was hanging out in orbit, just waiting for it. As Izuku looked at this, the heroes were doing everything they could to get the civilians in the area to a safe place while also containing the fires from Bakugo's quirk as he tried to fight off the sludge villain, trying to save himself from getting taken over. As Azuku here, he has a hostage. He wonders, why aren't they doing anything? As he looks, seeing Bakugo, instinctively he runs towards it, feeling terrified, but still going. 
wondering, what am I doing? As he just sees the Sludge Village about to attack him, he uses his book bag like in cannon and hits it into his eye. Hal Jordan at this time already has figured out the trajectory that the ring is going to and it's spying on that location, seeing what's happening. Even heading down there real quick to see who is going to be chosen. As All Might sees Azuku just running headlong into it, trying to get his friend out of there in this desperate situation. As he begins to buff up, thinking, this kid, powerless, is being more of a hero than I am. I should be ashamed of myself. As he begins to buff up, he looks, seeing something inside of a Midoriya that he hasn't really seen in a long time. But before All Might could do anything, a blue light just shoots down, striking Mizuku as it blinds everybody with a brilliant blue light. This also creating a large force that sends a sludge villain off of Bakugo and into a big batch of fire that was set through Bakugo's explosions. Causing him to reel in pain while the heroes hurried up and subdued him. While the light that enveloped Izuku was gone along with him. As Izuku's bag and items were also gone. Izuku, who is still somewhat in a flinching position from this, opens his eyes and finds himself in orbit. Panicking, stating, what? What am I doing? What's happening? He looks at himself, asking, What is this? As he just hears somebody laughing, stating, Man, kid, that was something. Ugh, you got some real guts, you know that? I'm honestly jealous of St. Walker. Ugh. Honestly. If only you would have ended up in the Green Corps. With... Azuku flinching, saying, "What? Who are?" As he states, "Oh yeah, name's Green Lantern, Al Jordan." As he thinks, remarking, uh, "Wait, you're that famous hero from the states, aren't you?" As he smirks, stating, "Yeah, pretty much." And you must be pretty confused right now. As he, Azuku looks down, saying, "I'm in orbit, and I'm not." Dying from the vacuum of space. What, what's going on? As Hal states, look, there's going to be a lot of explaining to do, but first, let's take you to where you need to go. As he asks, wait, what? Am I dead? Are you dead? As he's thinking... How's thinking, well, well, the kid did just instantly shoot up into the atmosphere, he's glowing, and he's not dying from the vacuum of space. Of course he'd be confused. And of course he'd think the only way this would actually happen if he was dead. As he sighs, telling Izuku, calm down, you're not dead. As he points to the ring, Izuku looks at it and states, what is this? And why does it look like a blue version of yours? He explains that, well, I'm part of the Green Lantern Corps. You seem to have just been picked by the Blue Lantern Corps. Uh, everything will be explained, but we gotta, but you gotta follow me. Pointing out in the space, with him stating, "Wait, where are we going?" Al Smirk stating, "Another planet, of course." Right to the home base of the Blue Lantern Corps. Come on. As Izuku sees that he has his bag, he just follows him, especially wanting some explanations for this. 
as he surprisingly finds that he just passed Jupiter in one second from leaving Earth orbit. Thinking, holy crap. And ending up to the home world of the Blue Lantern Corps, seeing a lush green paradise. He remarks, this place is incredible. As a pale individual with a odd, uh, let's call it kind of like a tail, a head tail coming out of the back of his head, floats towards them stating, Welcome, Hal Jordan, and you, brother. With Izuku saying, huh? Not a bit confused about this. With Hal stating, oh, that's just how they refer to each other here. Brother, sister, that kind of thing. Like brothers and sisters in arms. With Izuku saying, oh, and uh, you are? Hmm. I am the first Blue Lantern. My name is Saint Walker. Now then. I suppose you have some questions. Follow me. You won't be here long, and as you most likely have already found, you'll be able to fly back home in no time at all, just like you flew here. As he was explained to about the different lantern cores and their power, as he noticed how it was actually glowing like a lot. Even his eyes were glowing insanely green. With, with St. Walker laughing, stating, Well, that's just natural. You see, the Blue Lantern Corps is one that embodies hope. In fact, each Lantern Corps has more or less a living entity inside of its main battery. It is something that was born when the first of many happened in the universe. But the Blue Lantern Corps, the entity Adara was born of the first prayer it was uttered. As for the one in the Green Lantern Corps battery, it was when the first life form moved upon its own will. This might not seem like much, but it was the beginning of so much. As a result, Blue Lanterns are empowered by the hope of the universe itself. And that hope empowers the willpower of the Green Lantern Corps even further. As Izuku states, so the Blue Lanterns power up the Green Lanterns? As he remarked, yes. And the blue lantern ring also dampens the power of the red lantern, which, unfortunately, we have seen signs of a signature of the red lantern core, as well as a remaining signature of the orange lantern core, upon your home planet, is troubling, to say the least, even more so in considering that we can't find them. Their power is being somewhat dispersed, making it harder to find them. With some sort of device keeping their power rings cloaked from our detection. Even more troubling that they haven't done anything in quite some time. With how stating, yeah. I don't want to know what's going on, but I know it ain't good. As he asks about those two, uh, cores, he was explained to that the orange lantern's power was produced by greed, aka avarice. And it was born when the first thing was stolen out of greed. As for the Red Lantern's core, it was fueled by rage, wrath, pure hatred. It was something that the their Blue Lantern rings were able to dampen the power of. 
and in the presence of the main battery of the Blue Lantern Corps, it was left powerless. Though that's more of something that happens from overwhelming a Red Lantern ring with multiple Blue Lantern rings. As he states, okay, what else? They describe about the constructs that the ring can make, as well as the battery that is stored inside the ring that is used in order for them to recharge it. As he asked, how do I recharge it? He smirks as he teaches him the oath. So, for that, we'll leave it for another event. As he's taught all kinds of things, or at least explained quite a number of things in a short period of time. And is told that they should probably get back home. He seems quite young, and his parents will most likely be worried. As Izuku remembered, oh man, as he puts away his notebook, taking all the notes from everybody around them, and all the abilities that this ring has. As he thanks them, and just suits off. This being where we go and see that the all that well Bakugo he's looking for Izuku to yell at him and ask what that blue light was as All Might was looking for Izuku as well wanting his successor seeing him as a great possibility as he landed and that home, he apologized to his mom for being late, stating that he got held up the uh, studying at the library, not really wanting to tell his uh, mother that he went to an alien planet, and not knowing how to explain that to her either. So there's that. As he was just relieved to have Izuku home. And as he stated that they had dinner ready, asked what he was going to be doing when the, the weekend comes. He states that he has a place to go to. He wants to train some more and figured it'd be the best place. As Inko always trusted him to be responsible, she didn't really mind. But she did ask him to be safe. As he smirked. And this is where I'll, this is where we'll be leaving it off. On a bit of a cliffhanger. As uh yeah. I do hope you have enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. The second part of this will be uploaded, and I do hope you guys will enjoy. As for the future, as for what will happen, oh, you'll see. You will see. And I do hope that you will enjoy. With all that said, see you guys later.